Howdy once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and recently I received a nice gift from my buddy Jason at banggood.com, and the gift is two miniature flyball steam engine model governors. So let's take a look at these, they're pretty neat. And thank you, Jason and banggood.com. As I mentioned, these were complimentary items. They did not cost me a cent, but if you wanted to buy them, they're about $45, and I'm going to put the link in the comments below, so check that out if you're interested, because they are much more precision and well-built than what I expected when I ordered them. And I tell you, I would not reproduce one or make one for $500. There's just an awful lot of work in them. So let's take a look at the dimensions. And then I'm going to run them just with uh, electrically to show you what the, they do. And then if there's any interest and there's enough views in this video, I will make another video and I hope to install them on some of my little model engines. I'll talk more about that later. But if nobody's interested, I won't bother with that. This one is approximately 90 millimeters high and the balls are 10 millimeters in diameter. And that just gives you a sense of the scale. And this particular one has just two balls. The other one has three. Note the little bevel gears, and also the input and the output, and it probably doesn't matter which is which. And when mounted on to a steam engine, it would be belt driven by this little pulley. And it would be adjustable as far as the amount of steam, but what a governor does like this, it just governs the speed of an engine uh, and maintains a constant speed regardless of the load same as a governor governs the speed on gasoline engines. Now this one is constructed primarily of brass, but there's a few steel components. What kind of steel, I do not know. But as the balls spin out like that with centrifugal force, the valve, and this is the valve here, and you can see we have an input and an output, the valve regulates the amount of steam or air that is passing through there. And as the speed uh, bogs down or slows down, the valve would open and give it more pressure to spin out and keep the balls out. And as the term goes, uh, this engine running balls out. And this one would be mounted onto the engine with screws. So it had to be bolted in a position that uh, a belt could come off the crankshaft and drive it. But it really is precision. And a good workmanship. It's just not uh, what you would call sloppy workmanship at all. So I'm really amazed at this. I liked the pictures when I saw it on the website and then went ahead and ordered and I thought, well, I'll order both of them while I'm at it because one might be better than the other for mounting on one of my engines. But the input is very small. That's an eighth of an inch OD. So the ID is probably only about 330 seconds. Of course, this is going to be metric. And uh, so it would not admit a lot of uh, volume of steam. So therefore, what I'm saying is this would work only on a very small engine. All right, let me hook up uh, some power to this, just as a mock-up, not on an engine, and show you how it operates. Then I'll talk about the other one. Now, you may be interested in my setup here. I've had several failures, but I think I'll show you the failures. First of all, a Dremel is way, way, way too fast. Oh, can you smell the ozone? So, uh, even with the speed control, way too fast, so I've coupled it with a second speed control. But even at that, it's just jerky and, you know, it's kind of either on or off, regardless of how I have this one set. So I'm scrapping this method. This is very quiet. That's the way, the reason I wanted to do it. But I'm going to put a slower speed motor on there and give it a try. All right, here's my setup. This is just an old Craftsman drill. It is variable speed. So again, I'm using two variable seeds, speeds, this one and this one, and it's still a bit jerky, but at least this thing doesn't run at 30,000 RPM or some insanely 
high speed so this will work at least for the uh, demonstration purposes here and I'm just using a piece of fuel line real small fuel line from a chainsaw for a drive. Now watch at lower speed the balls are relaxed and are in the down position but as I speed it up they will swing out. And while I do that, watch the valve here. And this yoke and linkage moving the valve up and down, opening and closing it. And I, I suppose bringing it into different positions for a, a flow rate, but, but watch that. It's just interesting to watch. And that drill is a bit loud. I know it is. Let me zoom in on that valve. Okay, did you like that? Let me go ahead and hook up the other one now, which will operate similarly. I like the appearance of this one better simply because it looks more intricate. Now the valve down here appears to be a globe valve but I think that's all just pretend and it's probably a straight line valve. But look at the tiny little screws that they use here on the packing gland. So and a little oiler right here. This one would mount directly onto an engine and this would thread into the uh, input of the engine but this would be the input into the governor and when they swing out it's opening and closing the valve can you see that I'd like to put a little color on that maybe so you can see it go up and down again I believe it's adjustable up here I don't do not know what RPM it's set at very small uh, holes and of course they're in metric size so I'll have trouble matching up uh, my plumbing but isn't that neat let me see if I can get that hooked up I'm a bit ashamed of this setup and I'm back to the Dremel which runs way too fast but this will be a friction drive off of a tiny little felt buffing wheel rubbing up against the pulley because there is no shaft extending out of the pulley on this one and then I have really a back to two speed controls and it's still going to be very jerky but let's see what it will do. Okay, here we go with the three fly ball governor. Let's see what it does. And at least it's not so noisy with the Dremel. Now watch that little piece of string which I tied around the shaft there so that you can see it go up and down opening and closing the valve. See, I don't have a lot of control over the speed. It's more or less on or off. Pretty neat. Now the question is, what are you going to do with those little governors? Well, I have shown this model Stewart engine many times. Remember, I made this when I was 16 years old in high school. And I did not make the governor for 40 years after that because it was too complicated for me as a kid. I had important things on my mind at the time, not governors. So you can see how this works. And I've shown that in video, so I'm not going to... Uh, talk about that now but originally I thought well I maybe I could go ahead and put this on there just for the heck of it but it looks way too small I, I know it wouldn't have the flow of steam that I need plus this one is done why go back to that let me show you what else I might do 
I did not make this engine. My friend Cliff did. He made over a hundred engines and this, this one is marked uh, number 115 and he made two of each. This is a two-cylinder. It's got a reversing valve up here but I had thought that proportion wise this would be a neat little governor to put on that uh, particular engine. Either right into the uh, input there but remember it has to have a way to be driven so if it was set up in this manner and the flywheel possibly moved out and another pulley installed on the shaft that a possibility for it and you've seen this one as well but here's another possibility take this little nipple off and make an adapter and that could go directly on there and probably dri be driven it wouldn't be too hard to line up some pulleys and drive it or this could be mounted on there similar to that but the size wise that isn't too bad I think it's in proportion so that may or may not happen we'll see how many people watch this video and how much energy I have left remember I'm 75 years old and sometimes I'm not in the mood well that's it I hope you liked the video again thanks to Banggood and if anybody's interested in those again take a look at the link down in the comment and is in regard because at $45 I know I got it free but even at $45 that is incredibly cheap for what it is they must have somebody working for a dime an hour to sell them for that shipping included but it does come on a slow boat from China well this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now